Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I'm giving you an updated what's on my iPad video because a couple of you have asked what's on my iPad this year in 2022. I first did this two years ago when I first got my iPad. I have the fourth generation iPad Pro 12.9 inch display. I did a what's on my iPad video when I first started using it and now that I've used it, almost every day for two years, I wanna give you a real look into what I do actually use on this almost every day as a music teacher, as a professional musician, um, just, you know, for recipes and stuff too. And the keyboard case that I use on my iPad is the Logitech Combo Touch. This, um, the Combo Touch is the model for the 12.9 inch display and the Folio Touch is only for the 11 inch display. And I highly, highly recommend it. It's very comparable to and just as nice as um, the Magic Keyboard option that Apple sells, but at least a hundred, maybe $150 cheaper, which is usually, usually good. So, so I highly recommend the Logitech Combo Touch case. I also use the Apple Pencil every day with just a silicone um, case that I bought off of Amazon. I'll link that down below as well. Let's just go ahead and dive in and see what I've got on here. All right, here is a look inside my iPad Pro 12.9 inch display. My lock screen is a picture of one of my cats. Very sweet. And face ID always gives me trouble. So that's fine. Um, I have a nice fall wallpaper. I finally switched off of one of the just standard iPad wallpapers. I just wanted something a little cozier and geared more towards fall because it's my favorite season. So that's what I have here and I love using widgets and just making things not quite aesthetic because I don't do the whole shortcuts thing, but at least more productive and also just nice to look at. I, you know, tech is expensive, but it's also really nice and fancy. So I wanna be able to look at it and just enjoy what I have. So the case that I'm using is the Logitech Combo Touch case. It is a keyboard and it includes a full row of function keys. They're not the FN like function keys, but they have the actual functions listed on them. So this is really, really helpful um, when typing on my iPad, which I do all the time now. And just to make it feel like more of a computer and less of just a giant phone that's sometimes hard to handle, you know? So um, this has just a kickstand in the back. It's nice when you're on a hard surface like this, like on a table, but if you want to use this in your lap, it's pretty difficult. And um, I opted to buy this instead of the Apple Magic Keyboard because the Magic Keyboard is like $300, $350 and this one was about $150, which is still a little more than I would like to pay, but um, it's, it's really good and I don't have any complaints with it. I'm very glad that I chose this over the Magic Keyboard. But anyway, um, I think the Magic Keyboard is a bit hard to use in your lap as well. It doesn't have like a kickstand, but it has more of kind of a computer setup. I'll put a picture up in the video so you can see exactly what I mean. So this is my first page of apps. I'm really disappointed that um, in iPad OS 16, you can't add widgets to the lock screen. That's one of my favorite features um, on iOS on my iPhone is just being able to have widgets right there on the lock screen so I can just press the lock button and see like what the weather is, see like a quote that I like, um, just tap on something to message someone. You know, it's really nice, it's really functional. So I wish they had added this to iPad this time around. Hopefully they will soon though. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't have any insider information, but I really do hope that they add that soon. So let's just kind of go from top to bottom of the apps on my homepage. And then I have two more pages of apps because I personally only use apps if they're on the home pages. If I have apps that are only in the library, I'm never gonna use them because I won't remember that I have them. And that's that's just how I, that's how I am. That's how I organize. So <laughs> up at the top, I have a calendar widget that I made through Widget Smith. I think that this one is just prettier than um, the regular calendar widget and I like that it's black and white. It just, I don't know, it just looks nicer to me. I like that the whole calendar is up there so I can quickly see like when are all the Tuesdays of the month, when are all the Wednesdays, especially if I'm making and sending out invoices. I don't have to open the whole calendar app. I can just look right here to see when each day is through the month. 
And I have a Pinterest widget. I love Pinterest widget widgets so much. I use them all over my iPad and my phone um, just to choose a favorite board with like really nice pictures in it. This one that I have is like a book board that I have. So it's like books that I want to read, quotes from my favorite books, just, you know, cute pictures of people reading and stuff like that. Um, I make sure that this page of apps is okay for students to see <laughs> because I share my screen a lot on Zoom when I'm teaching online. And also if I'm teaching in person, then a student might see my homepage. So Pinterest is really nice with that because I can kind of curate exactly what's gonna pop up. Next, I just have a widget that lets me search YouTube. And this is really helpful because all the time in lessons, we'll look up a recording of something. So I can just quickly do that and it just pops right up with the search feature it saves just a couple seconds but it's you know it's just nice to have in lessons it's really easy then i have a gmail widget this doesn't really update on its own you can see these emails are from yesterday well i'm recording this on the fourth so this is from a day before i filmed this and um yeah it doesn't really update in real time which would be nice to just be able to check who just emailed me what the subject line is and everything. But it is nice if I need to quickly access Gmail. I see this widget before my eyes catch on to where Gmail is. So if I'm going to Gmail, I usually just click on this widget. Second or first full row of apps now. It's just calendar. I open it up a lot. HoneyBook is the website that I use to invoice students and um, to schedule things sometimes. I also have um, my policies up on here. So it creates an electronic version of my policies that parents can then sign electronically, which is really, really important for my students who are entirely online and are in different parts of the country. Um, it makes invoicing really, really nice and everyone can pay through card or bank transfer um, and it's all encrypted and very professional. Next, I have settings. I'm always going to settings to change my wallpaper or just, you know, check up on things, try different things. Next we have the camera. I don't use the iPad camera very much, but it's helpful to have right there. Then the app store, I like having that on the front page when I just wanna search for another app or see if an app exists, just to quickly click on. Then I have Pinterest. I love using Pinterest, especially on my iPad. I was getting lesson ideas there. I love using Pinterest on my iPad just because the screen is so large. The display is so nice and I can see everything just really, really beautifully. You can see that Pinterest is really pushing Christmas on me right now and I'm not ready because it's the beginning of November. Um, next, I have the regular YouTube app. Then I have Trello. I love using Trello for my to-do lists to organize um, recital ideas and blog post ideas and just all kinds of things. So let's go to my Halloween recital board and I'm going to leave out my students' names but this is how I choose my recital order. You can very easily move Trello cards around and just rearrange them like that. So that this is how I plan out my recital order. I just write in everyone and what they're playing, just in whatever order I think of. And then I just kind of move the pieces around until I come up with an order that I like, kind of alternating between viola, piano, violin, and piano, violin, piano, viola, things like that. And also just creating a flow that I think will be nice. But Basically Trello, you can create all of these different lists and then you add cards to the list and then you can archive the cards or you can move them between different lists. So if it's a to-do list, you can have like a doing and a done section. And then when you're done something, you move it from doing to done and it's really helpful. It's also really satisfying. So I love this because you can make really nice wallpapers with pictures from Unsplash and it's, it's just nice. And I can have that sync between my computer, my iPad, and my phone, and anything else that I would have. I can have this app on it. Next, I have Apple Music. I, right now, I use Apple Music instead of Spotify. Um, I love the higher quality of music, personally. I think it's so, so much better. Like, I can tell the difference. I've mostly been listening to Midnight's, Taylor Swift's new album, and I'm so, so excited for tour. Ah. Yeah, so um, the speakers on my iPad sound great. There are four, two on the top, two on the bottom over there. So the sound quality is always really, really good. I do tend to listen more on my phone just because I can carry my phone around in my pocket. Wherever I go in the house, the music is gonna follow me. But the iPad plays music really, really nicely. So I love using it on here. And I'll use that if I'm like doing some freelance writing. 
and I need kind of a soundtrack on, I'll just pull up Apple Music on my iPad and then close the screen and it gives me a little less distractions. Then I have Gmail. I don't use the stock mail app just because it always tends to give me problems. I do use it on my computer, on my MacBook, but um, the app has just always given me problems on the iPhone and the iPad. So I just use Gmail because all of my emails except for one are through Gmail. So that just works better for me to have it all integrated like that. Next, I have specific music tools. So a couple of these are ones that I've been meaning to try out and I don't really use yet. The first one I have is Tuner Lite, which used to be my go-to tuner. It is only available in portrait mode and not landscape. So sorry, it's sideways. Um, this is a good tuner app. Oh, oops. <laughs> this is a good tuner app. Um, it's free, but it has a little banner ad down at the bottom. You can, oh, sorry. You can change the color just by swiping and there are fancier skins that you can choose from if you wanna pay, but I always just leave it as the black um, and it's fine. It's a very, very basic tuner, and you can also use it as a drone. And basically you just choose sharper or flat to change the pitch. The metronome that's usually my go-to, even though um, tonal energy is really great, my favorite metronome is Pro Metronome. It shows up as just metronome on the home screen though. And this one also doesn't have a landscape mode, and I usually use my iPad just like this with the keyboard, folio, combo touch, and, um, you know, just exactly sitting like this. So it's a little frustrating that there's no way to just kind of rotate things just a little bit so that it would look nice like this, but whatever. Um, I love this metronome because I love the spinny dial wheel and the light that follows it. It's so nice. It's just, it's just really satisfying. Um, so click play to get the tempo. Oh, and I made it really, really fast. So you just scroll to get a lower tempo. You can change um, the, you can change the time signature. You can add subdivisions. I used to have the pro version and then I switched to a different Apple account and I have to purchase it again, but I just haven't. And you know what? Here's the landscape mode. <laughs> it's not as pretty though. It, um, one thing that I like about this is that it tells you the actual tempo name above the BPM. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I'll have an idea of what a tempo sounds like and I'll be pretty accurate with it. But it's hard when a student asks, okay, so this is 120 beats per quarter note. How, like what Italian term is that? We can like really simply look it up in here and just say, I'm pretty sure it's a Allegro, but just to be sure. Yeah, it's Allegro. So this can tell me for sure exactly what tempo, or if it says Allegro, I can give them a metronome number range from what this tells me. Also has the tap feature and it's just good overall. Here I have Tonal Energy. This is my very favorite tuner. I don't know why I don't have it first in this folder. I should probably change it, but um, my best streak is one day because I don't open this tuner app every single day. But this is a very intricate tuner. I do have a video where I show it in depth. I'll link that up in the cards if you would like to watch that. I won't go super in depth today, but I have this all kind of specialized for strings. So strings and ultra. Um, I put it in strings mode. There's also wind and voice. And then in tune range, ultra fine will give you the finest adjustments to make sure that it's really, really, really in tune. And um, I just have it on normal damping because I don't quite know what that means. The metronome is also very intricate in here. Um, you can do a lot with it, but for me, this one is a little too complicated and mathy, so I just usually go with pro metronome. Then I have a couple apps that I've only tried just a little bit or have been meaning to try for different videos and things like that. I won't really go into that because I don't really use them right now. Next, I have Andante Practice Journal. I've done a couple videos about this app. It's a really, really great um, practice journal app where you can log your practice sessions. And I haven't been doing it for a while because since I've been out of school, I haven't had to practice consistently for like two hours at a time or anything. It's more just teaching and maintaining my skills. So um, I love that this one has stats in it. Let's see if I can go to 2021 where there would have been more activity. I might not be able to. 
I can go through the whole year, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but the stats are really, really nice. You can see how long you've practiced through a certain time period and how many sessions you've had, what your mood and focus is like. So you can use that to really find some, some more productive ways to practice. Like if you find that your mood is better at a certain time of day, then you can try to schedule your practice sessions more for that time of day. It's just really helpful. And there are also, there's also a journal section. And so I've mostly just used that as um, examples in videos before because I do like to handwrite um, my practice journal things but this is a really really great way to lock your practice next I just have the regular photos up and then Google photos I back up all of my photos everywhere to Google photos so I have them right next to each other because if it's something recent I can find it in photos if it's a really old picture I'll find it in Google photos next I have this drive widget which I love I just tap search and drive and then I can search for whatever I'm looking for. So I usually use this to search for sheet music. So let's just look up Beret. And it pulls up the scan that I'm looking for. Super nice and easy when I'm teaching online. Um, usually I read music in Fourscore, but I don't have absolutely everything loaded into Fourscore. Sometimes I just need to search on Google Drive. Then I have the actual Drive app right here. And then Docs, I use Google Docs every time I teach because I keep a notebook for each student in Google Docs so that they can have a log of what to practice for the week and my personalized tips for them. And then also it helps me during lessons because then I can remember exactly what we worked on, exactly what they're doing really well at and what they need a little bit more help with. So I use Docs all the time. So this is an example of what my notes look like. I do use a nicer font, but um, basically I write the date, what they're working on, something good that they're doing with it, um, practice tips for this week, and if we made some notes on my iPad or if there's just something that I wanna point out, I'll include a screenshot of whatever they need. And we just update this as we go with the newer dates up at the top. And then, yeah, this keyboard is nice. I think that it's really satisfying to type on. It's not like super clacky, which personally I like. I like a more quieter keyboard, especially because I teach on Zoom and Zoom will pick up those keyboard sounds and then sometimes I hear them echo back to me. Uh, yeah, so quiet keyboards are my personal favorite. So while we're talking about the keyboard, let's really show it a little bit more in depth. Um, the first button that we have is a little square that takes you back to the home screen. Next we have the brightness. Gonna keep it nice and bright for the camera and then this button is a little keyboard button and this one lets you bring up the keyboard so if we go back into docs or anywhere where you can type so when you press this keyboard button it'll bring up the on-screen keyboard so if for some reason you want to type with your fingers or if it's being weird and it keeps showing this you can press that and now it just has the little bar with like autofill stuff Next up, we have a little magnifying glass. It's a search button. Brings up spotlight search nice and easy. Next, we have the keyboard brightness. So these keys do light up, which is really fun. I never use this, but I love playing with it. I don't know why, I've just always been like that. Then we have music controls, rewind, pause, skip forward, and then all of our volume buttons, mute lower volume, higher volume. The last button on the keyboard is a lock button. You can press this to lock and unlock your keyboard, but you will still need to use Face ID if you have that set. Okay, back to the apps. Um, in my doc, I have the option set where it shows you recent apps because I find that if I'm using an app, I'm gonna be using it over and over again. So it's nice to have it there to easily find. And then these are the apps that, well, some of them that I use the most. The apps that the app that I use all of the time on iPad is Fourscore. And this is just a song that I'm working on with a viola student. And I have many in-depth videos about Fourscore, so I won't go too in-depth in it today. Just check out my Tech for Musicians playlist and you'll find lots of Fourscore related videos. But this is the nicest way to organize my sheet music and have it all digitally. I have a lot of my students' music in here. I also have my own personal sheet music in here. And it's very helpful. It's easy to write on with the Apple Pencil and it's just very, very nice and very clean. So I use that all the time. Next, I have GoodNotes, which I also use a lot. 
um, in lessons. I have one notebook that is called lesson notes and I just keep this open to use in anyone's lesson. So the template for this lesson notebook is just manuscript paper. That way if we're doing some music theory, if I'm explaining something, doing some note reading stuff, I can easily just write it on there. Again, the Apple Pencil works beautifully with this. I mean, it's made for the iPad and the Apple Pencil, so it's so, so good. I know I showed good notes a little bit more in depth in my original what's on my iPad video, and like that's that's still relevant, I think. Next I have Procreate, which is basically like an art app for the iPad. And I think I'm pretty sure it's iOS only. So this is just fun to play around with. And I, I used to make some thumbnails in here and I have some stuff that looks weird, like projects that I never finished. Um, I don't use it that much anymore, but I can't think of a better spot for it. So right now it's on the dock. Then I have Safari, which I use all the time. Safari on iPad is really nice. A lot of the times I'll use musictheory.net on here when um, students need to review some note naming. And I just share this to the screen on Zoom and we go through it like that. It just works really well. I do prefer Safari over Chrome just, be just because it works nicely with the Apple ecosystem and Chrome really, really slows down my MacBook. So I've just converted over to Safari on everything. So that's my first page of apps. On to the second page, we have a Trello widget, which like isn't very good. I wish Trello had nicer widgets. I'll probably replace this with something because this is not doing anything. Then for some reason I have these apps again. I don't know why all the time I'll accidentally like bump something and accidentally like move it around when I'm just like hovering and trying to figure out what I want to do next. So apps kind of get moved around. <laughs> then I have files in case I need to access anything. Voice memos in case I need to record. I should probably move that over to music tools, but it's here for now. Then weather, <clears throat> Modacity. This is another practice journal app. I just don't really use it. I have it in case I ever need to reference it. Then I have Zoom. I don't use Zoom very much on my iPad, but I like having the backup for when I need to. Then Canva, I mostly use the app on my MacBook, sometimes on my phone, but again, it's good to have it here because sometimes I'll just want to download something from Canva and other times I'll want to use the pencil for more accurate like background erasing. Then I have Duet, which is basically which basically turns your iPad into a second screen. You can do this through Apple with Sidecar, but my MacBook is too old and doesn't work with Sidecar. Um, I found that I don't love using two screens with the mouse. I, I don't know. I, I just don't really use it anymore. Then I have an app that goes with my camera. That way I can control autofocus and things. Then YouTube Studio, some productivity apps that I don't use, but I like to keep on here just in case I do need to use them. Evernote in case I need to access some notes that I took in college. That's what I used to use just to take notes in class. Then Google Keep. I have a lot of notes on here from when I had an Android phone. This was my note taking app. So um, just have a couple of things that I like to reference in there. The news app, FaceTime messages, standard Apple apps, just kind of things that I don't really use, but I want to keep on here. Uh, for some reason I have Pinterest again. See, like, I, I don't know how these things get here. Then Messenger and then a calculator app because iPad does not have a stock calculator on it, which is still like so frustrating. It's 2022. Then Google Slides, another camera app. I don't remember which one is the right one. And then my last page of apps is more of a personal page where I just have more fun apps and just things that I use on my own outside of teaching generally. So Apple Music widget, some Pinterest widgets, just the stuff that I like. And then I think this is like recommended apps that Apple wants me to use at different times of the day. I can check on my batteries here. The two social media apps that I actually have on my iPad just cause I don't wanna get too distracted when I'm on here. Um, all of my reading apps, different streaming services, <laughs> shopping apps, last.fm because I love to track my music and have statistics and things like that because I'm a nerd, Patreon because I follow a couple different people on there and I like to watch their videos on the nice large iPad screen, and the Xbox app because sometimes I like to stream games onto my iPad if I don't feel like using the TV. So then uh, the last thing I think we need to share is the sidebar with widgets. I love this thing. I wish 
I could kind of like pull it up all the time and still have the apps just because it's pretty. So I have another Pinterest widget because I like pretty pictures. This is my fall board. It just has beautiful pictures of fall on it. And then I have the Apple News widget. Andante practice journal tells me how many minutes I've practiced even though practicing isn't my priority right now. Weather widget, batteries, Apple Music, Four score, this plays a drone right from your home screen, which is really nice. And then Google Keep, I never use this though, so I'll probably get rid of it. I think that should be everything. So that is everything that I have and use regularly on my iPad. Again, I have the iPad Pro fourth generation 12.9 inch display it came out in 2020. This does not have the M1 or the M2 chip in it. I don't think that's really needed if you're just performing or teaching off of this, but if you are um, looking to like edit videos or edit audio recordings, things like that, then the newer versions would probably be better for you. Or if you just have the budget for a newer one, then yeah, go for it. Future proof yourself, you know, that's always kind of a smart thing to do too. If you have any questions or if you have any other specific requests of what you would like to see me do on my iPad, please let me know down in the comments or on Instagram. I would love to make more videos that you specifically would like to watch. If this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos almost every Sunday at noon Eastern time, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.